This is the new Mercedes AMG A35. Based on the brand new A-Class, it's the new entry point to AMG. It's not a direct replacement for the old A45. There'll be a new A45 along soon with more than 400 bhp. The A35's 2.0-litre turbo engine develops 302 bhp and 295 pound-foot of torque. In the UK, it'll cost from 35,580 pounds. Now, apart from all the obvious stuff that you'd expect of a hot hatch, this time around, AMG has gone to much further lengths than it went to with the old A45 AMG. For instance, there's a shear panel underneath the engine bay which acts as body strengthening, bracing for the body to make it firmer so that it flexes less. That means the suspension has a much more stable platform from which to do its job. It also means you get sharper, more consistent steering response. There's another big change in the four-wheel drive system. Now, like the old A45, it still has that Haldex-type four-wheel drive system, so it's front-wheel drive most of the time, and then when it needs to send power rearwards, it can send up to 50% of the drive to the rear axle. That means it's not the type of four-wheel drive system that you would have found in, say, the Ford Focus RS. It's still very much a front-biased four-wheel drive system. However, this time, the rear axle is actuated by an electromechanical differential rather than electro-hydraulic. Basically, that means it's a much faster responding system, much more responsive. It's also predictive. So whereas in the old A45, it would only shunt drive rearwards when the front axle slipped, now it can predict that moment of slip and send drive rearwards before the front axle loses traction. These are quite important changes because Certainly the way the four-wheel drive system worked in the old A45 was one of the frustrations we had with that car. The other one was that the chassis, the suspension was so rigid, so it felt crashy over a bumpy road, and on UK roads that meant that it was compromised. Now that A45 was spectacularly fast, 376 horsepower, bundles of grip, lots of body control, but strangely it just wasn't that engaging to drive, something like a Renault Sport Megane of the day, or a Focus RS, or even a Golf R, would have been a much more enjoyable, rewarding driving experience. Not as fast, but more enjoyable. So what we want from this A35, clearly it's not going to be as fast as that A45, but we want it to be a more engaging and rewarding hot hatch. Now, Mercedes-AMG tell us that the car that they benchmarked for this new model was the old A45, which is maybe concerning because they think that car was the best, very high performance super hatch going. Now, I think most of us would probably disagree with that. So that's something we have to look out for when we're driving this car today. Is it only as good, only as entertaining to drive as that A45? Or have they managed to tease out a bit of character, a bit of personality and a bit of fun? So it's maybe as good to drive as the Focus RS or a VW Golf R. It's important to note that this is the most affordable AMG yet. In the UK, prices will start at £35,500, which is a little bit more expensive than a Golf R, maybe in line with an Audi S3, but a lot cheaper than the old A45 and cheaper as well than the Audi RS3. These Mallorcan roads are phenomenally smooth. We would kill to have roads as smooth as this in the UK. Ours, compared to these roads, are a disaster. However, on the few bumpier, slightly rougher sections that we have found, I think the ride quality in this car is a big improvement over that old A45. Now, adaptive dampers are optional. They cost about 700 pounds. They are fitted to this car. And if I switch into comfort mode, the ride is settled, the ride is composed, it's fluid. Maybe not to VW Golf R levels, but certainly much better than that old A45. So we've got bundles of driving modes. The new one is called Slippery, which clearly we're not going to be using today. That's for very heavy rain and snow and ice and all the rest of it. You've got individual mode where you can configure the car the way you like it, comfort, and then of course you've got Sport and Sport Plus. Now, when the road gets twisty like this one is now, I'm just using Sport Plus, partly because with this button here on the steering wheel, even within Sport Plus, I can cycle through the different damper settings and go back into comfort mode if the road is bumpy, into sport mode if it's sort of medium, and then when it's really smooth, you can use the full Sport Plus, and that's where you get the sharpest handling, the sharpest responses, the best body control. 
And in that mode, I have to say, the car feels fantastic. Really good control, precision, agility, and bundles and bundles of grip. At times, the roads have been a little bit slippery this morning, but on these Pirelli P0 tires, there's so much bite. You can carry so much speed through corners in this car. Clearly, we don't have the performance of the old A45, but with 302 brake horsepower, 295 pound-foot of torque, yeah, it's plenty brisk enough. It's not the most characterful, the most thrilling engine going, but as far as these very modern two-litre four-cylinder turbo units go, I think it's very good. Good throttle response, good energy at the top end, it keeps pulling nice and hard, and then in Sport Plus mode, the exhaust is actually quite vocal as well. What else have we got? Well, we've got seven-speed twin-clutch gearbox, rapid-fire gear shifts, really quick, works nicely in auto mode as well when you're just mooching around and we've got a massive set of brakes on the front axle which look really good they look like they're going to be super durable and it took a really quick charge down a mountain road to start to get them to overheat and the pedal to go a little bit long the steering is very good for e-pass it's never going to be dripping with feel but it's crisp and it's sharp and it has a predictable rate of response so it's intuitive and it's got a good weight as well good amount of resistance great cabin good seats you know what there's a lot to like about this car nowhere near as quick in a straight line as the old a45 but i think along a twisting road you're not going to give anything away and based on the experience i've had with this car today i think it's a more rewarding and engaging car than that a45 is it the most thrilling 35,000 pound ish hot hatch going. I don't think it is really. Probably something like the Megan Renault Sport, the new trophy, is going to be a more intoxicating, more rewarding sort of hot hatch when you're on a mountain road. But this is very good. And I think in everyday use, long distance use, it's going to knock that Renault Sport for six. What's amazing is this is only the second hot hatch Mercedes AMG has ever built after that original A45, it's quite clearly a better all-round car than that A45. And I think, in overall terms, it's a very good, premium, everyday hot hatch. When you judge it in those terms, I think it's very good indeed.